Hello and welcome to part two of the Renault Zoe review. Now today was supposed to be a range test in the Zoe, but unfortunately yesterday I hit a bit of a snag. Now after I finished filming yesterday, my review, the plan was to charge the car up to 100% so it was all ready for this morning so I could leave nice and early and do a proper range test. And it's going to be an interesting range test because it's December at the moment so it would have been a proper real world winter range test of the 52 kilowatt Zoe. I was really looking forward to it and I, I thought uh, this car was going to do really well. But unfortunately when I uh, tried to charge the car, which at the time was down to only about 14% left in the battery, after I did all the filming yesterday, uh, it failed to take a charge and it came up with a warning on the dash saying battery charge impossible and then displayed a little red battery warning light on the dash. So I had several attempts at uh, plugging the car in and getting it to take a charge and every time this battery charge impossible warning came on. So I also tried multiple charges as well just in case it was the charger that I was trying to plug the car into and again uh, the Zoe just would not take a charge. So I had no choice uh, really but to abandon the range test for today. I'm absolutely gutted um, that I've had to abandon it. I was really, really looking forward to seeing what this car could do range-wise. Uh, but this morning when I uh, was planning on taking the car back to, to Renault in Exeter, and by the time I'd driven around a little bit trying to get the car to charge, the car was down to about 26 miles range and I live 20 miles away from Exeter. So this morning was looking like a bit of a, a bit of a tight journey to get the car back. But before, or before I left Torquay, I thought I'll have one more try at getting this car to take a charge because I actually can drive past a charger on my way. And Sod's Law rocked up to the charger, plugged it in, and it started charging straight away at 22 kilowatts through the AC port. So the benefit is that I managed to get a decent charge into, into the car um, so I can drive to Exeter with no problems at all no panicking about the range but uh, because this car has not got a rapid charge port I still had to abandon the range test because to charge it to full on the 22 kilowatt that I had it plugged into was going to take about two and a half hours and then to do a range test I just did not have the time today to do it sadly uh, if it had the rapid charge port on it I could have plugged it into the CCS and in 45 minutes uh, probably been on the way with close to 100% but uh, yeah, so that's one reason why I definitely would spec the rapid charge port. So that was a bit, a bit of a pain. So what I've decided to do, uh, I'm now on my way to Exeter. Um, I've decided to do a little bit of a consumption test. Um, so it's a 20 mile route and I'm gonna drive the car how I was gonna drive it on the range test. So the car is in eco mode. And because the whole point of this channel is real world driving, I've got the climate control set to 19 degrees, which is pretty much what I have it set to in my regular cars. So I'm nice and comfortable in the car, uh, nice and warm. I think the outside temperature today, quite mild for December, it's about seven degrees uh, down in Torquay at the moment. So I don't think the heater will be working too hard. Yeah, so I thought I'd just do a consumption test uh, over that 20 miles. And then by the time I get to Exeter, we'll use that consumption multiply it by the capacity of the battery and that will hopefully give us a rough idea of what this car can do real world range in the winter but uh, yeah we'll, we'll see how we how we get on with that one but going back to the the charging issue um, last night uh, I decided to have a little look around on the internet to see if this issue had come up uh, before and I hit the Renault forums and it does appear that this battery charge impossible issue has happened to a few uh, Renault customers over the past couple of years. Now digging into it a little bit further, um, from what I can glean from the information on the forums, is that when you plug a car into a charge post, the car actually does a test of what you're plugging it into to make sure it can safely charge. And one of the tests is like an earthing test. And so when you plug the car in, it does a test of the charge post, and if it can safely charge, it starts drawing a charge. But if the car thinks that it's unsafe to charge, it won't do it. 
which is reassuring really that the car is trying to look after you and look after itself, that it won't draw a charge if it thinks it's unsafe. But what I, I can gain from the information that I, I looked up is that the Renault seems to be more fussy than other manufacturers on the uh, earthing test. And uh, I did read uh, something that one Renault owner put on the, one of the forums. He said that he had several attempts at charging on a particular charge post and the car just would not charge, he kept saying battery charge if possible. And he thinks it was failing the, uh, the earthing test on the post. So he moved uh, a couple spaces further along, um, again while he tried to look up what the problem was. Another EV rocked up to that post, plugged in and it started charging straight away. So um, it might be uh, a Renault issue that the cars are being overly cautious when you plug into a, a charger. But uh, not ideal, especially if I was 200 miles away from home and that happened, I'd be uh, doing 200 miles in a flatbed lorry I think. But uh, yeah, hopefully it, uh, anyone watching this, it won't put you off the Zoe because I do know people who have Zoes and they've been absolutely over the moon with the car and had no issues whatsoever. And you've only got to look at the number of Zoes on the road. Uh, if this was a, a common issue, um, I think uh, not many people would be, would be going for the car. But it happened. And like I said, the whole point of my channel is real world testing. Um, I want to experience these cars in the real world and if I come up against the problem I don't want to sugarcoat it or pretend it didn't happen um, you know I do want to tell you about it uh, my experience but uh, I said I have got um, the car up to about 34 percent charge so plenty enough to get me to to Exeter and uh, yeah we'll see what uh, the consumption is like Okay, just coming up to halfway to Exeter now, so I've covered 10 miles, 10 to go. And so far I have averaged 5 miles per kilowatt, so dead on 5 miles per kilowatt. Now the going has been a little bit slow uh, on the way so far, I've had to negotiate about a million cyclists today. Uh, it's December, why is everyone out on a bike? It's cold, it's wet, it's windy. Oh, I'd much rather be in a car today. But yeah, so consumption is actually pretty good. Like I said, climate control is set to 19 degrees, although it's fairly mild today for December. But yeah, even with the going being a bit slow, five miles per kilowatt is certainly not to be sniffed at. But anyway, going back to this uh, whole battery charge issue, we've been having a little bit of think of, about that one. And with the 2030 deadline coming up of all new cars that are being sold from 2030 onwards having to be all electric or hybrids for an extra five years but the government are pushing everyone into electric vehicles there are lots of people out there who are on the cusp of making the move to an electric car and uh, they might just be watching this seeing my issue with charging the Zoe it might just tip them over the edge to say actually I don't really want to go for an electric car at the moment charging is not very reliable and uh, I can see why it might put them off. Um, I've been driving electric cars for seven years now and up until this year whether I've just had a, a bit of a charmed experience with them I don't know but up until this year I've never ever had any issues with charging an electric car. But back in the summer um, when I took the Taycan on a long journey I had two failed charges on that journey although the car did charge very well on the chargers that worked that was more probably down to the chargers rather than the car whereas this issue seems to be possibly the car rather than the, the chargers but up until this year I've not had a single issue with any chargers whatsoever but all the electric cars that I've spent a lot of time in from 2013 up to 2020 have all been either Japanese or Korean and then the two European EVs that I've uh, done a little test on this year, I've encountered a, a couple of charging issues. So whether that's a thing, I don't know. But uh, it's just something that, that crossed my mind. But hopefully it won't put people off making that jump to an EV. But I can certainly see the concerns that people do have. You know, I still speak to lots of people who keep saying to me that 
the charging infrastructure is not reliable enough are the cars reliable enough and uh, yeah I can see their point I mean the, the last thing you want you want to be thinking when you pull up to a charger certainly when you're down to about 30 mile range and you're doing a long journey is crossing your fingers and hoping the car ch takes a charge that everything works I mean when was the last time you actually pulled up to a fuel station in your petrol powered car and hoped that petrol actually went into your fuel tank it doesn't happen unless your flap sticks shut it's not going to happen is it that petrol will flow into your tank and that's what needs to happen with uh, electric cars people need to be confident that when they pull up to that charger their car is going to charge it's as simple as that we're not going to convince people to, to ditch their petrol and diesel powered cars and go electric if they have that little bit of concern that when they plug their car in it's not going to take a charge like I said, if they're hundreds of miles away from home and they've got children with them, yeah, that's uh, not a very comfortable journey in the back of a recovery vehicle. But hey, I'm sure it will all be sorted out. have got 10 years, 10 years to sort it out. You never know, the Renaults might have uh, rapid charge as standard by then. You never know. Okay, so I'm just coming up to the outskirts of Exeter now. So I have now covered 18 and a half miles and even though the second half of the uh, route to Exeter is on much higher speed roads, so I've been going much quicker, the consumption is still at 4.9 miles per kilowatt in the winter. That's incredible. So that's looking like, well, I've just gone back up to five. So that's looking like a winter real world range of 250 miles. Is that right? With climate control on. Because Renault officially say that the average, cons the average range that you should get from the Zoe in the summer is 233 miles. But in the winter, they reckon the average range that you will get is 150 miles. Because they're, uh, you know, the temperature being a lot cooler, batteries are less efficient when they're cold, you'll be using the heater, air conditioning possibly a little bit more, extra drag on the tyres from the wet roads. But uh, yeah, this route, the 20 miles I've just done to Exeter, to average five miles per kilowatt, that's incredible. That's getting on for ionic efficiency in the summer. Wow very very impressive and I've just been keeping up with the flow of the traffic I've not been driving slow like I said I had a few cyclists to negotiate earlier on and some uphill acceleration to to get past them but I'm still at five miles per kilowatt this is a very very efficient car I still keep having to look at the gauge to make sure I'm reading it right that's so good. So there you go. So more justification on why the Renault Zoe might suit you, especially if range is a concern. That's incredible. Still can't believe that. Right, so here I am in Exeter. I'm just short of the dealership now, so I thought I'd pull over and just have a little bit of a, a debrief. So I drove 21.7 miles and my final consumption was 4.9 miles per kilowatt. Now, when you run that through the calculator, it comes to about 255 miles predicted range. Uh, I know that was just a 20 mile snapshot, um, but I still can't believe the consumption. You know, the climate control was on, I was driving normally. Yeah, it was quite busy on the road today, so the traffic weren't quite flowing as it normally would. But even so, that is incredible for the winter over 250 mile predicted range. Um, it would have been interesting to see what it would actually do over the, uh, the lifespan or the charge of the battery because uh, and I don't know if I'd be able to maintain that level of consumption on a bit more varied roads over a long journey, uh, especially getting up towards uh, motorway speeds. It would, would have been uh, quite a bit lower. But um, yeah, that route into Exeter, the first half is mostly town speed, but the second half is uh, a lot of 60 mile an hour road. But uh, yeah, 
So the Zoe is very, very efficient from that little test. Um, like I said, I, I think I will ask Renault to see if I can borrow the car again uh, in the new year and do another or attempt to do another real world range test uh, during the winter to see what it would actually do if I can leave with 100% in the battery and then drive it till it's uh, about 10% and that will give us a good idea of what it will achieve. But that uh, drive in has uh, blown me away consumption wise. That's incredible. I was kind of banking on maybe 3.2, 3.5 if I was lucky, but 4.9. Amazing. So yeah. So uh, a little recap over my uh, two days in the car. Uh, the car itself, uh, I've been actually um, quite impressed with. Um, I've gotten used to the high seating position uh, over the couple of days and now it's not so much of an issue. Um, I'm comfortable, the steering wheel does adjust for high time reach, so it's one of the reasons why I can get nice and comfortable in the car. Plenty of space in the footwell uh, for my feet. So yeah, it's all right. I would highly recommend one if you are thinking of an electric car. Um, yeah, the Zoe should tick all of the boxes. Just spec the rapid charge option. Reason one, resale value. And reason two, when you're out on the open road and you need a quick charge, charging on a 50 kilowatt CCS charger is so much quicker than having to do it on a 22 kilowatt AC port. So yeah, rapid charge, go for that one. And Renault, Include it as standard. There you go, told you. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that little video. I know it's not what we were expecting today. Um, I am still gutted I didn't manage to take the car on a proper range test, but hopefully in the new year, I'll be back uh, with the Zoe and we'll do another one. But uh, if you have enjoyed these videos, please like and share uh, and subscribe because uh, the more people that do that, uh, the better chance I've got of getting more cars from local dealers and, and press cars as well. So uh, yeah, well hopefully we'll see you on the next one very shortly.